Okay, this is the probably last actual tutorial with actual tutorial type stuff information in it. This is a kind of mixed bag of things that didn't fit in anywhere else and um, one or two kind of undocumented or perhaps not clearly stated features, things that didn't really fit in anywhere else. So it's a total mixed bag of weird stuff here. Um, very, very first thing to look at when you're in the file menu. Um, I forget if I actually said this or not, but pressing up and down you can skip through songs one at a time. Um, if you press left and right, you can move through 16 songs at a time. Um, maybe kind of handy. Um, also now you can see we've, we've got nothing loaded, but um, this is something that's not actually explicitly stated anywhere, but it's something that I find really, really handy. Um, let's say we, for example, like this. Um, I'll just mute it for the moment. So at the moment we've got... <coughs> excuse me. At the moment we've got the uh, B column highlighted. Um, if you press um, Start, and change to a blank um, bank on the file menu. You can actually save that whole bank. Um, so you can copy sounds from one area of, sort of from one kind of save bank to another, um, which is really, really handy because you can, for example, make one save bank, which is lots and lots and lots of little instrument patches that you like, if you find a bass sound that you like, if you find a hi-hat sound that you like, you can effectively save them. Um, and you can move them around. The other thing that you can do is you can, um, let's say, let's load this, maybe for example we like this kick drum. So press A, you copy it. Um, you can move to an empty song but because we've still got that kick drum copied, you can paste it down and you've got it saved. Um, you've now got it saved. So you can effectively make remixes really, really quickly by copying elements from one song to a new bank. You can make, you can make like a whole save area for patches, which I find really, really handy. Um, okay. Let's look at a couple of other things. Let's stick with this one that we've just copied. I'm just going to mute it for now. Um, if you go into any area on the pattern editor, um, we're now on R, the R channel. A um, couple of little tricks. If you hold down the R button and you press right, you can see all of the um, uh, horizontal parameters get randomized, which is kind of cool for making weird effects. So let's start playing that. You've got all kinds of different volumes going on. Maybe you want to mess with the um, maybe you want to mess with the filter, or you want to mess with the LFO. So you get all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Um, you can also mess with the vertical parameter by pressing up and down. So that's kind of a useful little trick. Um, let's mute that again. Um, another little trick. If you highlight the note and press start, actually let's turn it off. Uh, okay, got that muted. Um, if you highlight note and press start, you'll change from a graphical representation to the actual notes. Uh, well, like visual representations of the actual notes to actual characters, which is maybe easier for some people. Quick little point of note, if you know nothing at all about musical theory like me, um, hold down B, press up, you can see you've got C, D, E, F with all the sharps and what have you. Um, once you get above A, things are perhaps a little unusual. It's probably just a touch difficult to see on the screen. But A sharp is actually represented by a B. And the B... 
and B natural is represented by an H. So instead of going A, A with a little sharp, and then B, it goes A, lowercase b, little h symbol. This is a sort of system of notation that's used a lot in certain parts of Europe. I don't tell anybody, but I looked that up on Wikipedia because I didn't know what it meant, and I saw a post in the Nanoloop forums which was really, really helpful. Um, possibly the most useful little thing that we haven't actually talked about so far, anywhere when you're actually on the pattern editing menu, if you hold down R, sorry, I might juggle the screen just a little bit. If you hold down R and press up and down, you can switch to the, the channels without actually having to go to the bottom menu. So if you press select up and down, you can move through the menu. You can move through the different channels. Um, or when you're on the actual pattern edit, sorry, I'm jogging the screen again. Press up and down, you can move through the channels, which is really handy. Um, the other thing you can do is you can move you can move to the bottom menu and then move through the different synthesis parameters. Or when you're in the pattern editor itself, if you press left and right, you'll move through envelope, um, note, um, pitch or uh, LFO envelope, synthesis, panning and delay, which is really handy. So once you get pretty good at nano loop or pretty familiar with it, you can really race through the pages pretty fast. Um, I might have missed maybe one or two things. I know that you can copy from one cartridge to another, but I've only got one nano loop cartridge, so I can't show you that. Um, I also haven't done backing up to computers just yet, but I will do that at some point. The last thing that I'm going to show you, I'm just going to turn on my light quickly. Um, I'm also going to move the camera, so get ready for the screen shaking about. Yeah, this is this is my room. This, this was my note, so I knew what I was doing. Um, the last thing that I was going to mention, if you like Nano Loop 3, 2.3, I would strongly recommend you get one of these. Um, the DS has got a whole bunch of things going for it, obviously. It's big, it's kind of heavy. Um, this is a Game Boy Micro. It weighs absolutely nothing. You can get them for 50 bucks on eBay. Um, and it's really, really, really quite a nice aesthetic to use. The other thing, um, these drive me absolutely crazy. So again, while the SP is really, really nice to use, that annoys the hell out of me, because this always falls off in my bag, I lose it, I have no headphones, it's kind of annoying. Um, also, the micro, again, absolutely tiny. Um, I'll just show you what the screen looks like quickly. The other cartridges go in the bottom, which is kind of odd. Also, mine's kind of something rattling around inside mine. I don't know what's going on there. Um, the screen is very, very, very small, but it's very, very clear. Um, so it's basically my weapon of choice for composing on nano loop. Um, I, I keep it in my pocket on the train. It's really, really, really nice. Um, it's obviously got a tiny little speaker, but it's got a nice headphone socket. Um, I didn't record the video on this because the screen is a little small for this, and also you have it jogging about all the time. But, um, it's really nice to be able to keep a little Game Boy Micro in your pocket for um, kind of like a little notepad or composing on the train or whatever. Um, absolutely love it. 50 bucks on eBay. I would strongly recommend one for your sort of portable Nano Loop 2.3 needs. Um, it does have a weird non-standard type Nintendo connector, so kind of a pain in the ass to connect to other things, but it is possible. Anyway, um, that's it for me. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed these tutorials. There will be one more coming once I get the backup cable, but this is the end for all intents and purposes. Um, yeah, really enjoy doing the tutorials. If there's something else that you'd like me to do a series of video tutorials for, drop me a line at laserbeat at gmail.com, laser spelled L-A-Z-E-R-B-E-A-T. Thank you very much indeed for all of your patience in sticking with me this far. Bye-bye.